You know, recently I realized on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't look nearly enough like a vampire. It's by far time we fixed that. This video is brought to you by Diamond Art Club. Last week, I took it upon myself to make a couple of very whimsical corsets that basically just looked like trees. I did this by basically burning a bark pattern into foam with a soldering iron in order to kind of make it look like these actual leather corsets. And since that actually went quite well, it got me thinking. I don't know how to leather work yet, but what other cool imitation leather things can I make? So this week I'm going to continue in with my corset nonsense, but this week I'm going to use my faux leather working technique to create something with a slightly more vampiric theme. Mostly because as some of you may have noticed, I've been dressing a little bit darker here lately and I just want more stuff like this in my wardrobe. So we're gonna get right into the process, but before we do, let's hear a word from this video's sponsor, Diamond Art Club. Diamond painting is a new DIY craft hobby that's like paint by number, but with colorful resin rhinestones. The final result is a sparkling mosaic artwork that it shimmers and shines. I partnered with Diamond Art Club last November and they sent me the black and white kit to try out. And now that it's complete, they wanted me to show off the final result. And I can verify that she is sparkly, she is shiny, and my magpie brain is very satisfied. The process is really easy and calming. It's great if you like something relaxing to do while you watch movies or TV. And the process is really simple. You have baggies of different colored rhinestones that correspond to a symbol on your canvas. And to apply them, all you have to do is dip the tip of your applicator in wax and use that applicator to stick the jewels to your canvas. So if you would like to try one out, right now you can save 20% off your first purchase with Diamond Art Club by going to diamondartclub.com slash alpaca20 and using code Alpaca20 at checkout. Thank you to Diamond Art Club for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. It is now the next week and here are all of my pieces. I'm not gonna go too much into depth on the cutting process because you guys have seen me cut things before. But as for patterning, if you didn't see last week's video, I actually wrapped myself in duct tape again so that I could take a better fitting corset pattern that I can use for a variety of future projects. The executive producer is trying to eat my cord. Stop, stop that. Just the most unhelpful business partner. Hey, um, hey there. Ow. Whenever I took this corset pattern, I also made a couple of pattern variations to use for this week's video. One is more of like a bustier pattern and the other one is like an underbust pattern. And then I also made one more that is just more of a corset belt pattern. So for each of those, this is what I'm thinking in terms of design. So I'm planning on making three little corsets in this video. One simple corset belt just because I need one, nothing too fancy here. One underbust that has more of an edgy harness look to it with an engraved Celtic raven motif. And one red bustier that has an engraved rose pattern on it. I'm using the terms gothy and vampiric pretty loosely in this video, but they should make some more sense with the outfits in the reveal. Nothing too crazy, nothing like super original, mostly just an opportunity for me to go crazy with, first of all, fake leather techniques, um, the wrong way with craft foam, and also very selfishly a way for me to get like slightly vampiric gothic garments whenever I'm supposed to be making a video for my job. Also, if the footage looks kind of like dookie in this video, there's a reason for that. Uh, last week, my kit lens got even more broken, so sorry about that. Now, I do have my new 50 millimeter lens, but the problem with that is whenever I was doing research to figure out what I needed to get for this lens, basically every article neglected to tell me that I needed to have like an EF to M mount to actually use it with my Canon M50 camera. I've bought one of those, but it's coming Thursday. This is Sunday. So I don't know, maybe I'll get to use that for the reveal footage. That is hopefully my goal if I can actually get my act together. But if not, my footage is gonna be crappy just for one more week before I can get this working and get my kit lens into the repair shop. It is what it is. Okay. Okay, so since I already have my pieces cut out, the next step is just gonna be pinning, and then I'm going to be very closely following the steps from the previous video, just sewing everything together, gluing on foam. It's gonna get a little monotonous. <laughs> so I'm gonna go through all of that pretty quickly so that I can get to the fun part of the video. Because if I plan correctly, it should be pretty fun. So I actually 
actually forgot. We have one more step to do. We need to cut out the foam. I think I'm gonna do things just a little bit different this time and sew the foam on top of the layers between the seams because before the way I did it with gluing it on top after I sewed the main base is I got this gaping, which is fine for like a tree because I'm gonna texture it anyways. But these are supposed to look a lot cleaner. So I think doing it this way should hopefully work out a lot better, which means we need to cut these out, then glue, then sew. Slightly different from last week. time for glue, but I need to sew this up first. Hello. I didn't vlog a ton last night because I was on the phone with my friend. What if like she like takes out like Diesel's eye and like Ratchet has to like Ooh. make him a cyborg guy? And then I had a meeting and it was it was busy. It was a whole thing. But I've basically gotten all of the boring steps done, which is Great, we love that. I just need to do like a little bit of ironing and then we're finally on to the fun parts. So today I'm basically gonna try to finish these. <laughs> Knock on wood. The only steps I really have left are I'm going to draw the designs onto the surface and then I'm gonna carve them in with my wood burning tool and then it will just be time to paint. I also have to sew between the two layers of the belt one and put like grommets and everything. So fingers crossed it actually works out and I get these done. Um, I'm cautiously optimistic. So let's do some ironing on foam. Um, seamstresses, look away if you value your sanity. It was then that I attempted to iron my layers of canvas, pleather, and craft foam, and it didn't do much. It did something, but not much. So I came up with this little solution instead. So my iron was really not getting these seams to press down, so instead I'm just going and top stitching them down, and I actually really like the way it looks. I think it has like a nicer feel to it. It makes it feel more like, I guess, a boning channel, like a fake boning channel. It adds a little bit of visual interest, so I'm gonna do this with this corset and probably with the other two as well just because again these are also not really pressing flat all that well but I can just sew this down and it should be just fine. <laughs> Welcome to the art zone. So before I burn the designs in, it is time to actually draw them out on my corsets beforehand because last week I just went freehand with the wood carving, but I do not trust myself for this. So I have two sort of ideas for inspiration for these for the sort of like bustier corset. My inspiration is this. This is a beautiful leather journal that my wonderful neighbor gave me for my 16th birthday years ago and I absolutely love it. It's really cool. It's actually more of like a journal cover so I can put like whatever book I want in here and it just looks beautiful and nice. And red is my favorite color so obviously I just love this red look and I almost bought a red leather bustier off Depop a while back. Didn't and I have regretted it ever since so I want to make something that's like this but instead of this sort of like hummingbird design I want to do like like embossed roses I think would be really pretty. My second piece of inspiration is a little bit more gothic. This is kind of the best example that I have. Mostly like solid black with maybe like hints of purple in there with ravens on either side, sort of inspired by Odin's ravens. I thought it would be super cool and pretty like gothic and vampy. Fingers crossed I can actually draw good ravens and roses on these with my woodworking tool without messing up. I am admittedly a little scared, but I'm just gonna try it out and pray. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine, I hope. Then of course, I'm gonna just put a solid layer of spray paint on these and then detail them the same way I did last week and do all of the fun weathering bits that I absolutely love to do. Let's figure this out. 
So for those rose designs, I kind of just pulled up reference of some roses and tried to make little groups of roses that spread out over the surface and connected those with some vines and thorns. I didn't want to make it too busy, so I made sure to leave some free space, especially on the areas that weren't the front. And later, whenever I was carving, I decided to add some sparkles in those places to fill it out, which are apparently becoming a staple of my art style. And moving on to the raven one, she was a bit of a struggle because birds are not my speciality, but I used reference and tried to make some ravens that are sisters not twins, and then I added some vaguely Celtic designs around them because I absolutely suck at knot work. And now that we have our sketches, it's time to begin carving. Now, we carve. Also, concerned viewers will be happy to know, I have a respirator this time. But first, um, I had to wait for my tools to heat up because I forgot to plug them in. Okay, now it's time. All right, carving was actually pretty difficult and took longer than I thought I would, you know, just my classic famous last words, mostly because it was like 40 degrees and I kept losing feeling in my hands and face. But once I got into the groove, it went a little smoother. I basically used the sharpest area of my chisel tip on all the lines and then tried to essentially use it like a calligraphy pen whenever I got to the leaves. And I also used the side to add some shadows to the roses for some depth. I also added in lots of those little sparkles and I think it was a nice touch. Intermission. Hello. Can you tell I've been wearing a respirator? Anyways, we have one down, one to go, and it's been taking me a little longer than I had hoped. And it's super cold outside, so that's part of it. I'm not built for cold. I'm not built for this weather, so uh, I now have two pairs of sweatpants on boots, one glove for my hand that's not working because it just keeps freezing and I can't feel it anymore. So hopefully now I have what I need to finish this up. Let's do this. So after sucking it up and returning to the harsh, cold darkness, I actually got into a bit of a groove again, and this one didn't take me as long to carve as the first one, even though I really thought it would be worse. I used the same techniques as before, but used more angled hatching on the ravens for their feathers, and it actually came together pretty nicely, even though I carved in the little trim patterns pretty poorly, but um, I think it looks okay. They have sort of a handmade vibe that I think really works for this piece, actually. At least that's what I'm telling myself. But after all of my designs were carved in, before I could return to the warm havens of my base, Basement, I had to give these fellas a base coat of spray paint, which you will see here in some of the worst quality footage this channel has ever produced. Okay, don't worry though, because the production value is about to pop off. inside and cozy. The executive producer is here and I'm almost ready to start detailing. First, I am going to go take a hot shower because I am so very cold right now. Yikes. Okay, I have showered, I worked out, and now I am back in comfy clothes and the executive producer has found her way onto my lap. Hey, 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 stop. 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 Please stop. <sighs> she jumped down because she wanted to chew on my cord and I wasn't letting her and she got mad. Um, where was I? <laughs> so all my main pieces are, okay, are we coming back? Come on. Hi. Okay, so all of my main pieces are now painted and they're ready for my detail painting step. But before I do that, I am going to just quickly, Ooh. oh my God, she's literally digging her talons into my leg. Very distracting, you know, being pierced by five knives at once. <laughs> Anyways, before I do my detail painting, I'm just gonna sew up these layers so that this one is like basically done. I think I'm gonna leave grommets for maybe tomorrow because it looks deceptively like I have a lot of grommets here, but I don't have a lot of good ones. I, I think most of these are like a little too messed up. That being said, uh, I'm going out tomorrow, so if I need to get more grommets, I can do it then and I can just install grommets then. That's probably what I'm gonna do because I, I don't think I have enough. Another order of business, hold on. This always makes it difficult to actually scoot <sighs> built 
So I've been contemplating what to use for straps on the like slightly darker corset. I've settled on maybe repurposing these. This was part of an old cosplay of mine and I just don't really need it anymore. But these are like some nice thick leather straps and I think they might be just the right length to actually use with that corset. And then I have also purchased some little buckles so that I can sort of strap these on the front and the back and have this sort of like harness look to it. You know, I want this one to look like a little bit spicy, not too spicy spicy, more of like a Tabasco flavor, um, but still have a little kick. So while I'm working on this thing, I'm probably also going to attach these to that and figure out this whole situation here. And then I'm going to watch the second episode of The Last of Us. I had to wait a day to do it because my brother wants to watch it with me, but I am so excited. Let's get to sewing. Okay, so because of a very special little show, the only thing I finished that night was the corset belt. I just trimmed up the inner canvas layer's edges so that the outer pleather layer could fold around it and carefully sewed up the two sides, which looked like this. And this corset belt has two separate pieces because I'm planning on installing grommets on both the front and back, which I proceeded to do in the corner near my cat's litter box. In any case, I laced it up and it looked pretty cute, so I'd say it was a success. Hello there. It is late and I didn't do the painting stuff last night because I had to watch The Last of Us. I had to. Whoa, what's this? It's that weekly review that no one asked for. Spoilers ahead for The Last of Us TV show and game. Okay, if episode one got me very invested in this show, episode two made me want to buy the entire company. Everything here is incredible. I love the production design and I want to live in this city, you know, minus the hazardous debris everywhere and the spine melting zombie horde, but it's just so detailed and it adds so much to the world. Also this, a masterpiece. Once again, the tension in this episode was paced so well. Everything is set up until it finally explodes in the first encounter with the clickers and then literally explodes later on. The clickers were all practical, by the way, and they look amazing. I don't want to cosplay a clicker now, not gonna lie. Also, this... I don't remember if this is in the game, but Joel looking at his watch here is everything. And I'm gonna say it, I prefer Tess's death in the show. I love the little subtle bits of acting and dialogue in this scene, and the little hints leading up to it, like Tess's shoulder hurting whenever she's going down the ladder, her getting mad at Joel for being so pessimistic, and here Joel recoiling on instinct when he asks her to show him the wound. It says so much about these characters. I think this is way more impactful, this is deeply disturbing and plays on the themes really well, and this is just such a badass way to go out. The final scene of Ellie standing alone, really great way to end the episode. I adore this show. I'm probably as invested in this as House of the Dragon last year, which is really saying something. It's just so nice to see good TV again, because I feel like with a few exceptions, last year was a little mid. Anyways, uh, right, we were painting or something? I don't know if I'm going to actually finish these because I still have my grommet problem. Went to the craft store today, they did not have the grommets that I needed. I went to two different stores actually. So I really don't know how I'm going to sort that out. I've already ordered some more, but they're not gonna come until I think the day this video is supposed to release. So that's not gonna really work. My tentative plan is just to install some eyelets in there so that I can temporarily use them to shoot reveal footage and then put grommets in after they arrive. Not ideal, but it's probably gonna have to do. Lots of things going to plan here. <laughs> I'm actually so excited. It's turning out better than I thought it would. I'm pleasantly surprised. Let's see if the weathering makes it look like actual leather. <laughs> Another fun part of this project, I actually have like physical references that I'm working with for like my inspiration for these. So as I'm like weathering and doing all of this stuff, I actually have something to look at that's leather. So I can try to match the paint job to these two books, which is cool. Love that. Before starting on the detailing, I also added a boning channel and some zip tie boning to the front closures on both corsets to give them a little bit more rigidity. I find some heft is necessary for the front of a corset because my posture is basically like this. But as far as the weathering and detailing goes, it actually ended up being pretty minimal on these. I began with the rose corset and basically followed my method of adding a dark red inside all of the recessed bits, which I think looked pretty nice. It definitely added some depth, but I think it did dull the original color a little bit. I also shaded the inside of basically all the roses 
and wiped away the excess. I find that this really adds to an aged leather look. The Raven corset, on the other hand, was a lot trickier. I wanted the colors to be more subtle, so I wiped on bits of reddish purple and blue to add a little bit more depth that way, and did the same with the straps and buckles, but I wasn't quite getting the results that I wanted. So, the next morning, whenever I was weathering things last night, I feel like I got to a pretty good place by the end of the night, but the thing is, the acrylic paints that I have are just not that vibrant. I was really trying to make the reds pop and come out a little bit more, both in the rose corset and the raven corset, and it just wasn't happening to my liking. So, this morning, I'm going to hit them with a little bit of red spray paint, just to sort of like add a little bit more gradient and a little bit more vibrance, and I couldn't do this last night because it was dark and raining. I hope that this works because I really want them to have some dimension. They already look pretty good, but um, you know, I'm being picky. And I think adding a final clear coat is really gonna make it come together and give it that, you know, leathery gloss. But let us try this out. So I hit both again with the red, making sure to give the raven corset a light dusting and highlight the center of the large sections, and I did the same with the rose corset, but with more intensity. I really tried to let the color build up on that so that it was very red, and also so that the surface of the foam was nice and smooth. That's probably all I should do before I get too heavy-handed. Now we have to hit it with the clear coat. To finish out the paint job, I hit them with two layers of glossy acrylic clear, which I think made all the difference with making them look like actual leather. It adds that just little bit of shine on all of the raised bits, and in my opinion, definitely prevents them from reading as craft foam. <laughs> okay, also, random tangent, but I just got a package in the mail. And I think I know what this is. It's my M mount adapter. Which means that if I figure out what the heck I'm doing with this lens, I'm gonna be able to film the reveal footage with my new lens instead of this crusty broken one. Okay. Filming this with my new lens and it looks amazing. The focal length is definitely something to get used to because I'm standing so much further away from the camera that I normally have to. But it's worth it for all of this. I'm just gonna let this lens like flex real quick. You need to see this. It's not as grainy as it usually is. Okay, so we have just a couple more things that we need to do before this project is done. I need to put some bias tape around the edges of both corsets, add the straps, and then add grommets, or in my case, eyelets that are temporary because my grommets don't come in until Friday. I am very behind on this project, so let's do that. So this is what they look like whenever they're dry, they have clear coat on them, very glossy, very much looking like actual leather. So to actually get these babies finished up, I just pinned some bias tape around the edges of both pieces and sewed each of them up, and my oh my is that footage looking buttery if I do say so myself. I also attached one side of the buckles for the raven corset to the straps and the other side to the corset itself to get that harness look, and the straps for the rose corset also got some bias tape. Then it was time for my... Grommet predicament. It turns out that I had just enough for the raven corset, so it received a full set of normal grommets, but unfortunately there was no way I had enough for the rose corset, so I opted for the eyelets instead. I did figure out that my grommet washers kind of fit the eyelets, so I at least attempted to use them. I actually ended up just using the eyelets that I had. It looks like they're holding pretty well. I might not even have to replace these. Two seconds later. Okay, so nix that. I just tried it on. I don't think these eyelets are going to hold up. It's fine. I have more coming in and I can just replace them later. But alas, of course, the eyelets were too small, too sharp, and ultimately failed me. Anyways, to give these a bit of extra fancy hardware, especially on the raven corset, I also installed a few rivets here and there. I did it around the straps and where the raven eyes are supposed to be, and I did a few on the rose corset as well. Then I just cut and tied some laces for each. Except for some gaping in the bustier cups, these ended up fitting me pretty much perfectly, which wow, who knew using a pattern that fits you perfectly will render a well-fitting garment. <laughs> but with that, this week's creations are now complete, which means it's reveal time, and this is gonna take me forever to film, isn't it? <laughs> Yay.
there. I hope you enjoyed watching me make some like weird vampy corsets this week. I appreciate you being here. But the biggest appreciation of all goes to my patrons, especially my executive producers. Ruled by Pluto, Thea Maya, Agent Sketchy, Wolven underscore Arts, Corvid Dome, Lovisa, Eloquent Silence, In the Galaxy, Cleos, Meeks Hunter, Megan Penland, Sushi McNushi, Satoni, Mel W, Jim Jiminy, Jim Jiminy, India Gloom, Hypnos, Reflings, Katie, Michael Twycross, Sweet Winter Garden, Gravity Drop, Panda Pie 365, Bobo McFoe, Will Schmidt, and Bean the Bread. If you would like to become a patron and gain access to exclusive behind the scenes content on my videos, the link will be in the description. <laughs>